Hi there YouTubers, welcome to another servicing video from the SORT 6233, the Society for the Restoration of Trains. And tonight's project is this diesel, uh, Caltrain number 904, and if we have a look at the box, it's made by Lifelike, running number 464, sorry, 7642. It's an F40 apparently. Cal obviously is the um, livery. Nice condition. Quite weighty. I noticed that this here fell off. I think it's one of the horn assemblies. So I'll just put that back into the box. And see if I can fix it later on. Apart from the usual statement of it being a non-runner, I don't really know much about it. I'll just turn it around and let you see Lifelike, made in China, and this number stamped on it, 12190, don't know what that means. Anyway, I think I'll just apply it onto the rolling road and see if I can get any life from it. Please get up. Not a lot of response at all. Okay, let's get the cover off. There doesn't seem to be any apparent uh, body screws, so I'll have to try and see if the well, that's very solid. Don't see anything there either. I do notice that the couplers are absent, both sides. Um, and it's a kind of die cast body, so it's not going to flex open very easily. So at the moment, I'm kind of lost. This bit here seems to be separate. Well, maybe I wonder if this comes out and the whole thing moves. Although there's a hole there, there doesn't seem to a corresponding body screw. Nothing at the top. Okay, I'm going to pause here and try and find out how to separate these different pieces. And as it turns out, just simply a case of springing open. I thought it was die cast, but it's actually plastic and the weight is coming from these inserts here. And this is what we have, very atlas looking, freedom of movement there, if I apply power directly would that work? Not a lot happening there either. Would the motor be faulty? It's certainly running freely enough. Be the motor gone? I'll try applying power again. Oh, the light's coming on. Oh, you may you just see that there. 
Alright, it's coming on. But there's no one inside. Right then, I think we'll need to examine the motor. Well, as it happens, I have another lifelike local which I'm in the process of repairing and I'm just waiting on a part coming for it. So I've got the motor and this is the motor from the cam and I'm simply going to replace one with the other. And see if that will make much of a difference. First of all, this motor works. Oh, baby. You can see that motor works. Which means that there's a problem with this little baby and I'm not sure where to get that one I'll just have to investigate I notice as I turn this round that there are scratches on these uh, pieces here and there's a little bit of uh, I don't know if you can see that Yeah, it looks like one of the windings has gone up in the circuit in there. So if someone's had a good old stab at it. That isn't going to help, is it? Oh well, I think that verifies that this is definitely bin fodder. Right, then I'll try and get this one up and running. Oh, isn't that pretty? Yeah, she is running as smooth as you like. Take the voltage up a little bit. That's lovely. And then just take it back down again and put it into reverse. And away she goes. Fighting against the rolling road, but it's still working. I think I've got a little bit of stiffness in this back roller. You see that roller there? Not quite going as well as others. That's not going to help. Anyway, that's a job for later on. So let's have a look and see how she goes on the test track. That's nice. Well, I managed to find the motor, get it fitted, they're working fine. All I have to do is find some replacement um, couplers and this will be up running. So I'll just leave it for the time being, try and find someone who can supply with uh, lifelike couplers or similar. And I'll be back shortly. I was just about to put this away when I suddenly remembered that a long time ago I or bought a job lot of chassis, American style chassis, uh, which don't work too well. But look what I've got at this one. There's a couple of both ends. So I think this is going to provide the parts for my cow train. It's got a slightly different couple of fitting, uh, but I should be able to just pry this out without causing damage. Perhaps if I use a finer screwdriver. That comes up, that comes up. And this should slide out. I 
I'm being careful not to lose the spring. Take the coupler out and the spring as well. So I shall fit that one first to see if it fits. Spring certainly slides in there. And the coupler should push it back into place, covering it to make sure it doesn't make a, a run for it. And then fit the coupler cap, which I should have out ready. Here we go. So it goes in this way. Oops. Alright. Simply try again. Take the spring, slide in the groove. It's slightly wider diameter, I think, than the groove, so maybe it's not quite as compatible. I wonder if a fiery spring would work. Do you know what? I'm going to try a fiery spring. It's perfectly coupler. City oops. Maybe it's not going to work. <laughs> you can almost hear the fiery spring. Oh, don't put me in there, don't put me in there. Come on, baby. Ah, see, because of the extra diameter, it's not been held in. Uh -huh. Right. And then the coupler in there. Then the retaining plate. Over the top and got you. Nope, not quite. There we go. And got you. Right, so that's one of them in. Now for the other one. Okay. Yep, take that one, straighten the two legs, ease this out. Maybe not straightened enough, but this will help. There we go. Coupler and spring. Similar process. Spring in there and the coupler in here. And then the retaining cap, which again I should have had ready. I know, I know. Anyway. Oops, have I had that one there first time? And this one, in we go. I have to get something like a, a finger can. That would be a great idea, wouldn't it? Eh? So that you could see exactly what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Right, and there we have droplets. 
I'm going to put it on track and try a couple of uh, trucks and wagons and bits and bobs and pieces behind it just to see how it goes. Let's start off with a simple caboose and away she goes. Yep. So oh, I think I've got my cow train up and running again. Lovely, lovely. All before supper time as well. Right. I'm going to rebuild this and bring it back to you when I've done that. When I'm trying to put this together, I discovered that the body casing trying to match the two ends. Just excuse me, adjust my wee light a minute, right? Trying to match the two ends. I noticed that this pointy end here, whoops, actually goes with this bit, which is the front, pointing that way, but the lamp is pointing that way. And what I think I've got to do, literally, is I've got to take the gearboxes and the motor and swap them all round. OK, I'll be back in a few minutes when I've got that done. OK, so I've turned the motor round. I've refitted the bogies in the correct order. You might notice that the gearbox cover has come off. It's certainly held on with a couple of... simply held on with a couple of clips and that should sit OK in there. And now all I have to do is wire these in as well as getting the lamp in place. So just a little bit of tinning of the ends of the wires here. And so does my little cow train locomotive run? Let's see what happens. Look at that nice smooth takeoff. Not the quickest rabbit in the pack. Don't ask me where that came from. Um, but it's smooth and reasonably quiet. And as it comes round here, you ought to see that the cabin light is shining. There we go. Looks good. Give it a bit more room. So, my little cow train, what have we done to it? Well, replace the motor, replaced the coupler, got a good lubrication, and she seemed to be fine. No real problem to that. Uh, I'm going to let it run round and I'm going to test it over the points. So I'm going to set this point here and this point here and she should change tracks reasonably easy. Here she goes. Oh, he said that could be my point. Let's just take that back. Hang on. Let me take it back again. Yeah. This point doesn't quite close sometimes. Alright, let's try it this time. Here she comes. And as smoothish as you like. Suddenly got cold, so I put the gloves on. When testing, I found that the bogies weren't going around the points very well, so obviously, I think the wires are snagging. So let's open up again and see if we can do something with this. So it's always a good idea to check. It's 
So I'm going to run it like this to see where the snagging is taking place, but I think that these wires have been held down by the weights. While well, testing my little cow train, I discovered another a number of problems. Uh, I, especially when I tried to let her run over a set of points switching between this track and the outside track. In fact, it was the other way around, and it just kept jumping the tracks, and I couldn't understand it. And when I put it into reverse, it was making a very grinding noise. So I took it to bits again and I found one or two things. I found that the wires were snagging under the weights which restricted the movement of the bogies as they were rotating. And the other was that I'd soldered one of the wires onto one of the bogies but I'd left a blob of solder and that was enough to restrict the movement of one of the bogies. So I'm going to let it come round here and I'm just going to stop it about there and I'm going to reset the points to bring it from the out inside track back onto this outside track. So I've reset the points and I'm now going to bring the cow train back and hopefully she should take these two points coming up now without any problem. And look at that, nice as you like. So while it's turning round I'm just going to reset the points again and pick her up, there she comes. Coming round here, lovely as you like and let's bring her forward again. And just about there. So I'm just going to finish the rebuild and we'll try it once I've got it complete and then we'll maybe put in a couple of coaches, freight wagons, see what it looks like. When she comes around this time I have some American style freight waiting so I'm just going to bring her to a little halt about there just going to switch the points to bring her back onto the outside line. That looks good. And let's see what happens this time. Coming around reasonably slow through the points. Yeah, just a wee bit stick. Let's put on my track. There we go. Should be okay, don't know why it's doing that. Set the points again. And just let her come all the way around the back. And just about around this bend there will be a little rake of freight. I've got two tippers, I've got an old baggage car and a caboose and there they go. Yeah, looks pretty good. So kind of reasonably expensive repair but that should do quite well, looks real good otherwise. So I'll just get it boxed up and perhaps put it back onto eBay. Because I'm not really into American Outline. I like them, but I don't really want them because I just want to run British Outline on my layout uh, when I get it finished. But I'm sure someone can make good use of a nice Caltrain F40, I think it is. Yep. Okay, well let me get the cover on and uh, I'll just box it up. So meanwhile, thanks for watching. If you like it, subscribe for more Engage servicing videos and one or two other things. 
overcoming. So if you have anything constructive to say, nice to say, and would like to hear it, give it a little thumbs up. And um, keep watching YouTube. Bye for now.